As a model and actress, I learned from the best. I've always loved fashion. Welcome back to Fumi's Fashion Police. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we are back full force for a new season, ladies. So you guys have to make sure that you do not miss a single episode because it's going to be fun, it's going to be fashion, it's going to be laughter, and we are going to learn a couple of things along the way, including my very good self. And the new season actually started off with a bang because my very good self was invited by the E-Red Carpet here in London for the watermelon party of the Golden Globes. It was exciting. I loved it. And uh, it was crazy. It was a crazy day because I was flying in from Lagos that same day and I had to get dressed on the plane. I had to get dressed on the plane, get off the plane, run in my Louboutins to the event and just take a breather ready for my selfie. So this red carpet is the Golden Globes and we have categories. So let me share with you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I have my computer here because I have to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Alrighty, so we have fabulous. Instead of well-dressed, I have fabulous because they were just fabulous. The next category we have is slight alterations. Tweaks here and there, they look good. They look good, but because I'm a fashionista, because I have an eye, I can see one or two things that kind of, sort of, didn't quite get there, but they're not in the bad category. Talking about the bad category, we have not a good idea. It was not a good idea. It was not a good idea. Whether it was your stylist, whether it was you, whether it was a collaboration, it was not a good idea. Then we have best couples. Yes, he, she made each other look even more fabulous. The two of them were twinning, twinning in fabulosity. So I said to myself, why not throw them in? Then we have well-dressed men, of course. We have the well-dressed woman. We have the worst dressed woman. We also have the worst dressed man. And then, of course, we have the roundup, and that is the Watch Along Golden Globe Party here in London that I was invited to by the e Entertainment family. Such an honor. Many of you already know that I lived in Hollywood for 10 years. I went to these parties. I know how this runs. I know the village it takes just for you to walk on that red carpet and look flawless. It takes weeks of alterations, begging designers, pleading designers, running away from designers, getting your press, getting your agent, getting your management, because this is a big thing. We have at these award shows a couple of categories that attend, and I'll explain. And for that very reason, that is why you might not see everybody there. What do you mean for me? What are you talking about? Well, if you are seen as a celebrity on the red carpet, it is either you are nominated. If you are nominated, of course you have to show up, darling. Now, if you are presenting, 
you also have to show up. If you are nominated in a, an, an entire cast, meaning for example, See, like the orange is the new black, my fever, so in love with crazy eyes, I love her, I love her, then the entire cast will show up. Those are the kind of categories that show up for these events because they stretch out for three hours at a go. And so a lot of other celebrities prefer to go to the after parties, you know, and celebrate with the winners as well as the non-winners, you know, that kind of thing. But let me tell you something, my darlings. The red carpet is also an audition runway for the actors. Let the studio heads know that they still got it. They might be one or two years older. They might have one or two pounds heavier. Yes, in Hollywood, one or two pounds count. I still got it. It is an audition process for the casting directors because you do a television show, it's canceled like Mad Men. John Hamm needs another job. So he needs to show up there looking crisp, clean, and sharp. Not for only us, the fans that already love him, but to let the producers, to let the agents, to let the casting agents, to let the studio heads know that, you know what, this brother could be the next James Bond. They are all up there in their offices having uh, watch-along parties like we had here in London, and they are looking vicariously to see who still has that magic touch. I wanted to explain that to you as opposed to telling you about what the Golden Globes is like I've done before because I really want you to understand how terribly important it is for these award shows, for these celebrities, for the after parties too. We are constantly auditioning in Hollywood because you never know who you're going to meet. More importantly, you never know who you're going to sit beside. <laughs> Martha, 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 Michelle, I miss you, I miss you. She was my partner in crime for these award shows and we went to a hell of a whole lot. <laughs> invited, sometimes not invited, we crashed. But we were so fabulous, they had to let us in. Okay, so, you know what? Without any further ado, let us go into the fabulous category. We have Taraji P. Henson and Stella McCartney. Fabulous, she was a winner that night, about time too. Gorgeous, strapless dress. It was very, it was Grecian like uh, Egyptian esque. It was very Empress, very Empress esque, should I say. I loved it on, on her. I loved the tail trailing behind her. It was crisp white. Now, guys, you know, white looks beautiful on a tan. You know that. So, you know how fabulous that looks on chocolate complexion. The simplicity was beautiful. I loved the way she had the light blunt haircut and she flipped it over her ear with the dangling chandelier earring. The makeup was flawless. I thought she looked, she looked like a star. Okay. Hello, orange is the new black. Laverne Cox in Elizabeth Kennedy. This is how I want you to show up, Laverne. This is what I want you to do. She gave it to us. Pure white, high neckline, and then cut off sleeveless. You know what I like about this particular dress? And you guys might not see it right away. I like the fact that the sleeveless, um, that, that the sleeve is right up in the armpit. You know why? It tucks everything in. Not that Laverne needs it, but this is so glam. This is so old Hollywood. This is so classy, stylish, timeless. You can wear this dress 20 years from now and it will still have that same power factor. Again, white. To offset any time, you just look like a star, glowing. Laverne looked fabulous in this dress. I loved the hair, I loved the makeup, that dark lipstick off the white. It was just so erotic and exotic, but it was so classy at the same time. So classy at the same time. I loved the pattern on the clutch. That's the thing. Everything else had a little bit of, you know, jazz pizzazz, but she left the dress to speak for itself. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Fabulous. Jennifer Lopez in Giampatistia Valley. Love it. We were sitting down at the watch along party. I was sitting down with my new fabulous friend, Prince Cassius, and it, was, it took my breath away. I tell you for a couple of reasons, because this dress was pretty busy. It was pretty busy, but in a good way. A lot of people complained about the color. 
mustard i loved it mustard is a tricky color to wear you have to get the right shade combination of yellow of green and she got it and you know what she did i love the fact that she did not wear a nude lipstick she wore a red lipstick to really powwow the color absolutely fabulous jennifer lopez and i are the same age and there comes a time where you want to look sexy but at the same time you just don't want to throw everything out there you don't have to i love the cape because it really squared out her shoulders and it made her waist even smaller for the mere fact that it folded over one on each other on the skirt flattened out the tummy jillo is smart girlfriend you're doing well it flattened out the tummy cinched in the waist and of course it flowed all the way out and this is how to kick a leg Remember, Angelina Jolie went a little too extreme. I love Angelina Jolie, but Jennifer Lopez is passionate about fashion. She loves fashion. And so she studies it and she understands what works for her body. She's got curvaceous hips like I do, so she let the dress really relax. This is why I love Jennifer, because Jennifer looks for what is good for her figure, gives out the best, to the point where you look at Jennifer and you'll be like, oh my God, I love those hips, I should have, I want hips. Oh my God, I love her bosom, I should have that kind of bosom. She walks with confidence. I loved the dress. I loved the encrusted shoe. That's all you needed. You needed that draping necklace and you had the clutch, you had the bracelet and the shoes. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous with the red lipstick and the small earrings. Jennifer was looking fabulous. She always does to me because she takes this really seriously. She's an actress. She's a singer, she's a performer, she's an entertainer. But she has taught me also that your health and fitness is part of, is a requirement for your job. You have to look the part. And she takes her dressing also very seriously. It shows. Jennifer Lopez is somebody where if they say she's coming to the red carpet, you can already hear the buzz, feel the buzz. Either way, whether you don't like her, you don't like her music, you don't like, you want to see what Jennifer Lopez wore to the red carpet. Every single time. She never disappoints. Fabulous sunshine. Fabulous. I look at Jennifer Lopez drinking her water. So we both use straws. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Jennifer Lawrence in Dior. Jennifer Lawrence in Dior. I love the dress. How can you go wrong when you are in your 20s and you've got a body to die for? Almost everything will look good on you. I loved this dress. I didn't care for the necklace, but I loved the dress. She does not have any fat to pinch on her body. And I just thought, how glam, how fabulous, how very Audrey Hepburn. He's, uh, Dior has done a couple of dresses where it just has that fold over the bust and then it just shows up the waist. I love that it had the cutouts on the side. I love the fact that it was also backless. It was a gorgeous um, cherry tomato red dress that really looked fabulous on and her. And I love the little twist that she had in her hair and just pinned it back as she was a winner that night. Thought she looked great. Love her, love her, love her. Another one that I love, Olivia Wilde and Michael Kors. For a couple of is the color is berry is the color of autumn winter she matched the dress to her shadow or she matched the shadow to her dress now we know how matchy matchy doesn't work this was a genius fabulous 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 darling she let everything speak for itself and then she had this amber colored necklace that you can see she had in the transition of her eyeshadow beyond and fabulous and i never noticed how beautiful her eyes were so very pretty. Olivia Wilde, she had the deep decollage. She can afford to go there because she's got a smaller bus. It was simple, it was elegant. It's berry, it's ruby, it's burgundy. It's all of those rich, deep red tones that you find in autumn leaves and it just worked for the red carpet. Another thing that I loved about it was that because it was such a deep color, it had no relation whatsoever to the red carpet itself. You know what I mean? I thought Olivia Wilde, go right ahead sunshine, do your thing. Loved it, with a gold clutch, and then she had like a red cocktail ring, ruby red cocktail ring, mm, everything.
Now we're going to move to slight alterations. I did, I talked about this in the beginning, and I'm going to give it you, and I'm going to give you a little more detail. Slight alterations because it didn't quite get there, but it was in no way, shape, or form bad. Not at all. It just, for me, my opinion, was missing a little something. Who do we have first? Zendaya in Marquesa. Zendaya is 19 years old, super talented girl. And this was the only thing for me that I felt could have been a little bit more dramatic it could have it could have given it more fluidity to the dress and i think that would have made for a greater entrance all right so you see the three tiers they are all the same length and the same distance wouldn't it have been better if there were different sizes so the small one would have been small the bigger the middle tier would have been a little bit bigger and then the bottom tier would have been longer with the flow so that it would have had shape this very much looked to me like a cherry cake like what you would see like a the, the brides that you see on on the on the wedding cakes just one two three no she's tall she's beautiful the deep decollage gorgeous cinched in at the at the waist beautiful it was just that it was just stacked that's the word i'm looking for it was stacked i would have preferred it to flow had it flowed this dress would have been a million dollars that was it and it was custom made by, by Marquesa. Maybe that was the foresight she had. But when I, when I see Zendaya and Zendaya gives it to you every single time on the red carpet, I, I have seen her better. Let me see that. I've seen Zendaya better. Having said that, the dress was gorgeous. The dress was gorgeous. I think I was just, I just wanted more drama and more uh, uh, fabulosity like Zendaya who actually is a fabulous girl all around talented beautiful well spoken and she's in she she's she's very much in control of her career and what she wants to do and i love her for that so that was the little tweak track okay yeah. my gorgeous kitty perry in prada she was wearing a pig or a, uh, she was wearing a wig or a hair piece i think she was trying to have a bouffant and the bouffant didn't sit well it didn't sit well. It should have been a little bit lower and it should have been adjusted instead of it looking like she had a tennis ball underneath the hair. It didn't sit well, so it looked very cornish, you know, like, a, like an ice cream cone upside down. That's what I felt. Love the hair, love the color of the hair. Then the Prada dress was custom made and I'm struggling with this. Why? Because it didn't fit properly at the bust. It didn't fit properly at the bust and it almost as if it kind of um, uh, dragged a little bit downwards as opposed to lifting up her bust. It didn't do that. Instead, it just kind of flopped. It should have, it should have had some boning in the bust to pick up the bust line. That is my thing. And I, uh, I didn't care for the bow in the back. I didn't care for the bow in the back. Dare I say, had the bouffon sat properly, I would have loved if the bow was in the hair. Take it to 1960s Audrey Hepburn. That would have been glamorous. I would have loved it. I would have loved the bow in the back but of the hair. But I didn't like it at the back of the dress. It didn't, I didn't like it. You know, so those were the kind of alterations. I love the pink. I thought the pink was gorgeous and she looked fabulous. Gorgeous figure. She's pretty, pretty, pretty. Kate Hudson and Michael Kors. I felt the dress could have been worn backwards. She's got a fantastic figure. She's got fantastic abs. Abs that I dare to want. But it lacked class. It lacked elegance to me. Had she flipped it, and they had of course adjusted it for her bust line, so on and so forth, and you turned around and it was all backless in the back, this dress would have been screaming fabulosity. It lacked that. It didn't give me that elegance that I so very much desired. Simple as that. The flesh colored, love it. I love her. I think she's so much fun. She's a fellow Aries. She's a lovely girl. She's got a fantastic figure. I just didn't like the bust, the waist, the neck part. And that's another thing. 
if she didn't even have that, then it, it then it would have fallen towards the kind of Balma esque where you just have the bust, and the bust should have lifted, be, the bust should have been lifted up a little bit, and the skirt up a little bit, so that you do not show too much ab. I just thought this wasn't really great for any kind of red carpet event. No, no, darling, it just didn't do it for me. It didn't do it for me. No. Yeah, still there. Okay, moving forward. Kate Blanchett in Givenchy. Another dress that should have been worn the other way around. It had more personality in the back than the front. It was a little too you know, They could have just cinched it one, two in the back, switched it in front, and giving her a dare if you care kind of fiasco. She would have been fabulous. Loved the tassels, loved the lace, loved the pink, loved the way she tucked in her blonde hair. Smiling, she's a wonderful woman, gorgeous accent, fantastic actress. The dress was a bit boring in front. Otherwise, it was a beautiful dress in the back. Okay. Eva Langoria in George's Hobeka. Loved this dress. I thought it was so pretty. Eva Langoria has just gotten engaged, so congratulations to you, darling. I loved, loved this dress. Here's the thing for me. Take out the belt. I'm gonna put up a picture and it happens to be of Kirsten Dunst right now so that you can see what I'm talking about. The paneling, so that it could have had that in the dress instead of the bow. You know why? It was a bit busy. If a dress like this has prominent detail and that's all that it has, then that means the dress is not a pattern dress. This dress looked like, they started off with the pockets which I love. They got really excited and then they did it in the bow, which is nice, without the paneling. Then they went on and did it for the belt. No, it was a bit too much. They could have kept the bow design in the neck. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Just keep it white. You don't have to panel it or pipe it as this. So that was it for me for Eva. You know, the dress was beautiful. Such gorgeous detail. For me, even the top part was fine. It was the belt. The belt didn't match. The belt didn't seem to work for me at all. And I say that because even if you had left the top part, the belt still would have been an issue for me. The belt just did not have any business on this dress. Having said that, still gorgeous. Eva gorgeous. Love, love, love her hair. And I'm so happy for her. Congratulations. I love the just like above the knee slit. I love the white court shoes. She looked as fresh as a daisy. And like I said, just little things here and there, you know, the dress was gorgeous. Absolute. Okay. So not a good idea. Here it is what it is. As soon as I saw it, I was like, hmm? You know, I was like, what is this? Yes, darlings, we've got the siren. See, the Sinai is out. The stylist and you will just have to jump right into the ambulance because you need attention right away. Some of you are going to need some drips because you are going to intensive care. You are repeat offenders. And I have told you many a time, you seem not to listen. So guess what? The fashion police are here to arrest you. We're going to find you. And we are going to take you off the red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> for a while yes maybe when you do not have the opportunity and privilege to be on the red carpet you will appreciate what it stands for Heidi Klum in Marquesa I have now decided that Heidi Klum needs by all means I wish I had her number does anybody have her number give it to me Heidi needs to gain five pounds gain five gain ten you know why the, the, the weight loss is aging her I was a model too here is the thing Heidi is pretty Heidi is a pretty girl. If she just filled out a little bit, because I, I honest to God, don't think she uses Botox. I don't think she uses Botox. I think she's very German in that way where she's very natural and she doesn't think that she needs anything or whatever. But she is fighting tooth and nail to keep that Victoria's Secret figure. And that is not working for her. She needs to add some weight. The dress, she looked like a furry rabbit like a furry rabbit it it didn't do anything for her they're all the colors oh sorry all the pictures washed her out i found one that showed that she had you know tanned up a little bit just to make her skin a little bit warmer still the dress didn't do anything for me and gray can be gorgeous 
I think also had she removed this black belt and had even a white belt or a brighter silver belt that cinched it in a little bit, it would have been great. I felt that without the bra, her bust line was a little too droopy and also aged her even further. I feel that she just needs to add weight. She needs, this is something that I don't think she understands is gonna be good for her. Her fashion team, they need to be fired. Why? Because two things, and it's still a lose-lose. Either they know that it doesn't look, it's not a good look for her, the weight loss, and they're not saying anything, or even worse, they don't even notice. So, uh, Heidi, you need to surround yourself with people that are swinging. And Heidi, you are on a, a project runway. You are also an offender the last, from the last red carpet where you wore the Versace dress. I don't think things are going right. Since you left Seal, Seal was your was, was fabulous. I loved you with Seal, but not my business. We're only doing fashion. And because of that, you have to go to see the designer. We need to know what's wrong with you, my love, Muffin. You can also have the drip, yes, and french fries. All right, my love? Love you, Heidi. Love you, love you, love you. Uzo Aduba. I don't know who is styling you, but they're not getting it right and i say that because i've seen a couple of your red carpet performances and it's not right you are so much more beautiful than that you are not as big as they are dressing you the hairstyle is too heavy you don't need to wear this i don't know what to call it sleeves connected to the back but this right here is not working for me it's too dull it's too dark it's too aging uso is a young girl this wig, weave, hairpiece, glue in, patch, pluck in the center, whatever is not working for me. The hair has to fall off. I also do that with my weave center part. I pull it back because I realize for me, face forward is youth, it's fresh. And what you're hiding becomes more obvious. And I didn't like this on my darling Uzo. Absolutely not. I also didn't like the fact that she wore this black high neck long cutaway sleeve. There wasn't anything to give me something to play with because she's a very attractive girl. Now, like I told you, casting directors, studio heads, this is not what I want. Why? Because in, in Hollywood, you, you project an, an, an actor a certain way. They are phenomenal in a television show, in a film, and they always get cast those parts. I'm sure you've had that experience where you might not necessarily know the actor's name, you know the face, and, he's, and he happens to play the same kind of roles in different films, televisions, he's the mean guy, he's the this, he's the that. I don't want that for Uzo. I don't want Uzo to be the crazy guy. She is sexy, she is beautiful, she is young. This is the time to do it on the red carpet. When you're taking off all of the prison uniforms, Uniforms. Give me something, but don't make me feel like I want to put you back into your prison uniform. And that is how I feel. Uso, grab your bag. You're not staying for dinner. You're going into the ambulance. Yep, they're, they're here. Jump right in. I'll see you, honey, on the next red carpet. What can I tell you? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, Mara Rooney has the same problem as Uso. As Uso is dark with wearing dark dress and washed her out, it's the very same thing that happened to Mara Rooney in Alexander McQueen. My eyesight is bad enough as it is, I didn't even know whether she was wearing anything. It's flesh colored dress that did absolutely nothing on such a beautiful girl. Alabaster complexion, the makeup was flawless. Right up there with Kristen Dunst, the hairstyle was in pristine detail. Pristine detail. Gorgeous. So you know this was well thought out. Who thought of this? Who thought of this and said this was you see, let, let me see, let me tell you what I'm struggling with. How can you see this and say you look phenomenal for the for the Golden Globes? How can you see this and say, oh my God, Mara, you look phenomenal for the Golden Globes? Look at it. How can you see this with a straight face? The person is an enemy. Mara, call me. Never, ever, 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 ever wear flesh colored on any red carpet ever again. Now, this broke my heart, but I had to be fair. Regina King in Krikor Jaboti. I have a funny feeling that this Krikor designer designed her other dress that she wore when she won at a previous award show. So perhaps there's loyalty that has set in. What is this? What is this? 
this is an awful idea, not even a good idea, awful idea, then Regina, where did you get these sandals from? From circa 1982. They just looked, they, they, didn't, they didn't even make sense. They didn't make sense to the dress. If you had one, if you had one gold pointed cork shoes, I would have said okay. And silver and gold mixes, it blends well. It did not blend with this very harsh tin foil esque cape dress. And when I say cape, Taraji wore something like this, but Taraji's dress was all the way covered in the back. And then she had that, you know, very Grecian uh, tail behind to flow. Why does Regina now give us Batman? You know, give us Batman. It's backless. That's what I don't understand. It's backless and then it has the cape. I don't understand, Regina, how you could have seen this and said, let me jump into it, run onto the red carpet and be considered fabulous. How could you have seen this and say it's okay? It's like foil. It's like foil. It looks like hard Christmas decorations that you flatten and then it goes into 3D when Christmas time comes up. You know how like your dad will keep all of those Christmas decorations for next year, the year after, and then you know, you've had it for like 10 years and they're hard. This is what this looked like. I did not get it. 3D. How, you know what I want to know? Was she comfortable sitting down in this dress? Maybe that was what the cape was for, to soften all the edges. Awful idea. Not a good idea at all. It was an absolute awful idea, Regina. I love you, I love my sisters, but this did not work. The shoes were disastrous. Absolutely disastrous. I don't want you to own any pair of shoes like this. Throw, give them away. Charity. But not you. You're a star. You're a celeb. You've been in this business for over 25 years, honey. You deserve to be treated better than this. So, what is happening here? Uh, designer and you will jump into the ambulance. We'll take a spin around the track and we'll talk some more. Okay, so let's brighten up the mood and we are going to go off to the best dressed couples. Best dressed couples with the first picture coming up and we have Channing Tatum and his wife Jenna standing alongside Jada Pickett and her husband Will Smith. Jada Pickett and Will were both wearing Versace. Loved it, loved them. I love what Jada was wearing. It's a beautiful emerald green dress and Jenna was also wearing a gorgeous um, kind of spider wave blue ensemble. I don't have the name now, I'll put the name up for you guys to see. The gentlemen were gorgeous. They complimented their wives as their wives complimented them. I love this, absolutely. Will is just aging so gracefully. Look at that plump, delicious bow tie. Well, David Oyelowo and his wife Jennifer. David is one of my favorite gentlemen on the red carpet because he's not afraid of color. Once in a while, let it let it just you know dance in your life and he did it well in Dolce and Gabbana. I loved it. I loved it. It wasn't too much. Rosie Huntington Whitley and her fiance Jason Statham. Beautiful couple, very well dressed. I loved his cognac s color tuxedo jacket. It was everything. I want to buy it for Ula. Beautiful, well dressed, well dressed couple. They just, I mean, he was like the, the honeycomb and she was the golden globe. For this couple, yes, happy, in love. Congratulations, it's a new year, you look great. Love, love, love the couple. Men. Now, before I start to say this, guys out there, the press that are out there, editorial magazines, please put in the names of the suits that the guys wear. We want to know what they're wearing as well. You do not make any mistake when it comes for the ladies. All the names are there from their jewelry to their shoes, but I see that it's not so much for the men and it really, what, I had another extra hour, two hours, just trying to scramble to get names of the suits that these men were wearing. Regardless, I put them in because they were well dressed and when I say well dressed the lapel was right the break in the trousers the collar certain things that should be were in place and intact first up Eddie Redman in Gucci sensational the tuxedo had like a pattern to it even though it was one color I just thought to myself Eddie you are enjoying yourself you must love fashion and the designers are having a fabulous time dressing you you were well dressed the collar of the shirt Sharp. The hanky, 
beautiful. The jacket, the sleeve, the brick in the trousers, the shoes, the lapel. Mwah. There was nothing to be said. Brava, brava. Gerald Butler in Ferragamo. What's not to love? Blue. Indigo blue. And it was a three-piece suit. Very well put together. Very well groomed. He has a beard. He just really looked nice. And when, and I think for me, the extra power was the blue. Then we had Brad Pitt in Brioni to die for to die for. I didn't see him on the red carpet, but he just looked sensational. Ryan Gosling was in Ralph Lauren. There is nothing more beautiful than a white tuxedo. Nothing. And he wore it well. Absolutely. Orlando Bloom looked wonderful. Wonderful indeed. You know who he reminded me of? He reminded me of Dean Martin. A young Dean Martin. Dean Martin was always cool. He just sat back, had his cigar, and he just, you know, let Frank Sinatra lead the way. I loved the way that he looked. The lapel was satin, so it had a little bit more sheen, not shine, sheen. And that brought the front part of the suit forward, which I liked. From hair strand to toenail, he looked wonderful. Orlando Bloom, not bad. Uh, I heard through the grapevine that himself and Kitty Perry were having a little titty attack at the parties. Mm. Let us see what happens in 2016. Love is love. Damn. Love is love. You gotta go where you gotta go. You know? And if he likes what he likes, that's what he likes. While you are seeing her, please pull off that bow from her back of, the, of, of her dress. Can you do that for me, Orlando? <laughs> Okay, worst dressed man without a beat, Dennis O'Hara. What is this? I mean, did he still think that he was part of the Rocky Horror Show? There are no words. I'll let you guys to decide yourself. I will give him this though. He got himself a pedicure. At least that. But what oh, is this? Dare I say, are they Louboutins? I'm not sure. He came in there, he had nail polish on, he had toenail polish on, which is okay if you do it the right way. If you do it the right way, Dennis, not so much. This was ridiculous. So yes, I'm so sorry, Dennis. You know, Rocky Horror Show, yes, it works. Red carpet, Golden Globes, not so much. This was not great, and I had to put you in the worst category, okay? Worst dressed woman, Melissa McCarthy, uh, for a whole bunch of reasons. She looked like she wore foil and they threw her in the oven and brought her right back out. That's the first offense. The second offense were the shoes. I didn't like them. They didn't go with the dress. Had she worn court pointed shoes, they would have done the job. The bag, I didn't like it either. I didn't see, I didn't, I didn't understand what the bag had to do with the dress with the shoes. The long necklace, neither, th that didn't work for me. The dress was so shiny and so overpowering that, you know, she just looked like she just wrapped herself and came in. Now, the worst of all, worst of all, she designed it herself. Yes, Melissa has her own collection. I mean, let me, let me explain something. Posh Spice, Victoria Beckham, was a recording artist who turned into design. Never a time did she design anything and just run out there and wear it. She waited, she made sure she got the approval of the fashionistas and inched her way through. Melissa, through the grapevine, I'm not saying it is me, has been said to be difficult. I see why. Why would you wear your own design that nobody has really seen, nobody has really known, and you run out onto the red carpet? Why would you do this? Why would you do this? It is absolutely horrendous on so many levels. I'm so sorry, Melissa. The ambulance is coming. We are going to see the Sinai. We have to do a whole bunch of things. But the first thing is that you have to listen to the stylist. You have to listen to the stylist. Being difficult is not a good reputation to have, especially when it comes to the clothes department. And I say this because I'm going to round it up with some positivity. Congratulations on your 50 pounds weight loss. That's what I lost too. So I know how you feel. You want to jump into a bikini and you think it will fit. Not yet. You're not ready. You're not ready. You're not ready. Ah, uh -huh. no, 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 no. And that's what's what happened. So Melissa, throw it away. I think if you give it away, you'll have a hard time giving it away. It's horrendous. Not at all. Mm -mm -mm. Oh.
Best dressed man, and you know what? He deserves it. He was a winner. Is the la the show has ended? John Ham in Dolce and Gabbana. Fabulous. I loved it. Three piece. He looked dapper. Again, he just looked like the man that owned the room. Such confidence. Completely groomed from hair strand to toenail. He was a winner that night and he was the best dressed man for me. I loved it. John Ham, I hope to see you out there in another show. I love Mad Men. We miss Mad Men. I wish you all the best. Congratulations. You really looked fabulous. From hair strand to tuna. Love the shoes. Dolce and Cabana. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Fabulous. Fabulosity. And guess what? We have the best dressed woman. Best dress and she has a golden, golden pocket. Yes, she has a golden envelope. I am so excited about this because this was just like OMG. All right, let us open, shall we? Drum roll, please, drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga in Versace. Look fantastic. There is something to be said about falling in love, about aging, getting older. Lady Gaga came out and she was very gimmicky and that's okay because you stand out. But she has come into her own, absolutely. This is not the first time I'm seeing her, but she took it to the next level and I don't know whether she covered up her tattoos or the dress has covered up the tattoos that she has. This was sensational. The coloring of her blonde hair, because we know she's not blonde, was beautiful i have never ever ever seen lady gaga so gorgeous absolutely sensational i am happy for her and she is showing uh, she's showing contentment and she's ready to go into that next stage of her career and just embrace everything it has she looks like the golden globe of them all and lady gaga was breathtakingly beautiful to me. She is beautiful to me and she was that night. Sensational. Congratulations because she was screaming out loud when she got nominated for the Rocky Horror Show. So I know that this is a great moment for her that she won and she won so gallantly and so elegantly. How can Lady Gaga come from where she has been and be like this? And then we have other celebs and they're struggling. It doesn't make sense to me. Please, ladies, take notes of others. Stylists, take notes of others. This is how to come on the red carpet. I loved it. She did not show anything but her collarbone. Cinched in her waist and she took my breath away. Ladies and gentlemen, I have enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as well. This is the beginning of many things. After this episode, I'm going to put pictures of vlogging of the e-red carpet watch along party here in London. I had a fantastic time, really enjoyed. This episode is dedicated to David Bowie. He was the style icon and he was the one that started it all. Thank you so very much. There is no uh, quote of the week. It will only be a few words of what David Bowie had said. My heart goes out to Iman and the children. And I love all of you for watching. And let us have a blast in 2016. Goodbye. God bless.
summarise the red carpet in three words? This red carpet to me represents fashion, glamour and style. Yeah.